Hello class, in this module, we are going to focus on constant pressure calorimetry, and that's going to measure our enthalpy of our reaction. There are going to be different ways we're going to measure our enthalpy for our reactions, and this is just one method. I'll talk about the other methods in future modules. We are going to be using a coffee cup calorimeter, and here's the image of our coffee cup calorimeter over here. Now the coffee cup calorimeter is composed of two styrofoam cups, we have a lid, a stirrer, and a thermometer. And this is open to the atmosphere. That's why it's at constant pressure. And we only measure, we only measure the temperature change. We only measure the temperature change. Now it's useful to use a coffee cup calorimeter to find your heat of your aqueous reaction, the heat of your dissolved salt or your specific heat capacity of a solid. But before we do any problems, let's look at some assumptions for our calculations. So let's look at some assumptions. Now the assumptions that we're making, the first assumption is that our reaction mixture, our reaction mixture has the same properties as water has the same properties as water. So what do I mean by the same properties? Well, we're gonna be using, we're gonna assume our mixture has the same specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules, grams, degrees C, and we're gonna assume that it has the same density, which is one gram per milliliter. And we're making that assumption because the solution should be dilute. The second assumption we're going to make is that our coffee cup, our coffee cup itself is a perfect insulator. It's a perfect insulator. So no heat is going to be lost or gained. And our third assumption is that our reaction goes to completion. Our reaction goes to completion. If it doesn't go to completion, that means not all of our energy is going to be released or absorbed. So we're just going to assume that it does. Now let's take a look at our formulas. So here our Q of our system is going to be equal. So the whole thing is going to be our system. And it's going to be equal to our water, our heat of our water, the heat of the calorimeter, plus the heat of our reaction. We are going to also make the assumption that our Q of our system is going to equal zero. We're assuming no heat is going to be exchanged with our surroundings. So I'm going to rearrange this equation. So I'm going to keep Q reaction on one side, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract the others. So that will give us minus the sum of our heat of our water plus our heat of our calorimeter. Now... What we're also going to assume is that our calorimeter, our Q of our calorimeter, is going to be equal to zero. We're going to assume those two styrofoam cups don't absorb any heat. So we're going to say that zero. So that gets rid of that expression, or that part, that variable. So now we could say our Q of our reaction is going to equal the minus of Q of our water. And let's not forget the definition of Q. We've used this in the past. So our Q of our water is going to equal our MCAT, MCS delta T. Okay. So now, because we are at constant pressure, we can say that our Q of our reaction is going to equal the enthalpy change of our reaction. And hopefully we remember that from the previous module. And a useful formula for you guys is the delta H of reaction is going to be equal to Q over our moles. Now our moles can be, we can have to, we, sometimes we need to try to find these um, using the limiting reagent process. So that's why I'm just going to put LR there. It's not always true, but just be aware of that. And the reason we, um, a lot of, the reason I'm doing this is a lot of problems for our enthalpy, they'll want you to solve in 
kilojoules per mole. Okay, so these are going to be useful here and here. So let's go ahead and do an example problem. So in a cold pack, the divider is broken and ammonium nitrate dissolves in the water with the following endothermic reaction. And you have 1.25 grams of ammonium nitrate and it's dissolved in enough water to make 25 mils of solution. The initial temp is 25.8 degrees Celsius and the final temp is 21.9. Calculate the change in enthalpy for the reaction in kilojoules per mole. So this is just what I was talking about in that last portion. So let's write find delta H in kilojoules per mole. Now in this reaction, it's not giving us the mass, but we only have one starting material here. So we don't have to worry about the limiting reactant for this problem. Okay, but the moles they refer, refer to here is going to be our solid NH4NO3. Okay. All right, so let's write something else. So our delta H is going to equal our Q of reaction, which is also our minus Q of our water. So this is what we're assuming. This is our solution that we're assuming has the same properties of water. So let's write what's given here first just like we do in class. So we're given the mass of our ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, and that is 1.25 grams. We're given a temperature change, and our temperature change is 21.9 degrees C minus 25.8 degrees C. So again, this is our T final, that's our T initial. So we have a change of minus 3.9 degrees Celsius. And we're also given the mass of our solution, which we are going to go ahead and relate it to water. But this is going to be 25 mils. And like I said before, we're assuming the density of water and the specific heat of water, right? So here's just use our density to convert. One mil is equal to one gram. So this is 25 grams. So what's our first step? So now I've included everything in here. Our first step is we, we need to figure out minus Q of our water. And that's going to be using MCAT, MC delta T. Now we have our mass. So here it's going to be minus. Our mass is going to be 25 grams. And then our specific heat, recall again, we're assuming the same properties as water. So we're going to put grams degree C here and use that as our conversion factor, 4.18 joules, our specific heat capacity, times our temperature change, which we know is minus 3.9 degrees C. So then we will get, those are two negatives, so we're going to get a positive 407.55 joules. So we see the grams cancels and the Celsius cancels and we're left with just joules. Okay, so... Now, our problem, we want kilojoules. So let's go ahead and convert that. So there's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. So now we have 0 0.40755 kilojoules. And for sig figs, let's put that over there because we need two, right? Because the temperature only has two sig figs. So now we've got our kilojoules. So this is our numerator. So how do we find our denominator? Well, we need moles of ammonium nitrate. So step two, let's find moles of NH4NO3. And we know how to do this. So we're going to start with our 1.25 grams of our ammonium nitrate. And we'll simply use the molar mass. So 80.05 grams of ammonium, ammonium nitrate in one mole of ammonium nitrate, and that's going to give us 0 0.0156152, all right, but let's look at sig figs, we're going to need three of them, so I'll put that there, and this will be moles. So that's step two, and now step three, we're just going to divide the two, because we want kilojoule per mole, don't forget, we want, that is our delta H, so we're going to go ahead and take our point 4, 
0.0755 kilojoules, and that again has the two sig figs, divided by our 0 0.0156152 moles, that has three, so our answer has to have two sig figs. So we get 26 kilojoules per mole for our delta H. Now if we take a look at this, what is that going to be? Is that going to be endo or is that going to be exo? Well, it's positive, right? So this is endothermic. So if we did this in a coffee cup calorimeter, we should feel it getting cold. Okay, this is the end of this module. And go ahead and take your quiz and then moving on to the next one.